And welcome to today's concert. Now this week we've come to Ellesmere College in Shropshire, a large school in the rural countryside of Shropshire built in 1884. And we're here in this wonderful hall in the big school and this instrument is actually even older than the school. This was originally built in 1864 by a builder called Edmund Schulzer who came over to England in the 1850s at the invitation of Prince Albert to exhibit at the Great Exhibition. His organ created a, a great deal of interest because of his beautiful chorus work, his sort of very clear pedal sound, almost a string sound, uh, and also the purity and clarity of the flute sounds. This instrument is one of the best preserved of his, there aren't very many left at all, and it was originally built for St Mary's Church uh, in Tyne Dock in South Shields in the North East. At that time, in the 1860s, there was a lot of work, industry and shipbuilding in that area, so they built lots of new churches, and they had lots of money, so they had the best, which was Schulzer. He had a great influence over people like Binns and Lewis. Uh, however, by the 1970s, uh, the church had fallen into disrepair, it had dry rot and was going to be demolished and the organ was saved and brought here to Ellesmere School and it was reopened here in its present position in 1981. It's, uh, it's an antique in some ways and a slightly different sound which your ears will take a little adjusting to but however this was a great uh, new sound to the English in the mid 19th century something they hadn't really heard before coming from the continent and from Germany so I hope you'll enjoy hearing some of the wonderful sounds of this sort of antique organ really uh, but very exciting and a, a full proper concert organ really. Uh, to begin with, that was of course Joseph Bonnet's Etude de Concert, a great etude, a showpiece and a study for organ using lots of pedals and the entire keyboard and showing the full organ sound. I'm going to move on straight away and show you some of the very delicate, beautiful sounds on this instrument, some of the flutes, the strings and the general quiet diapason chorus with uh, a piece by Debussy, uh, La Chevaux au Delin, uh, which is of course the girl with the flaxen hair. Now this is based on a poem written in 1910. This piece by Debussy was originally for piano, one of his preludes, and it tells the story of um, a girl. It's set in Scotland, because it's a Scottish song, uh, and she sits in the heather in the meadow in Scotland, singing of her love in the morning sunshine. And the sound you get from this is a it's typical Debussy impressionistic style. We get his famous pentatonic style, like all the black notes. Um, and then it sets off and you get these beautiful moments where you can hear the sun coming through the mist over the Scottish Highlands uh, as it all clears and it goes moments of vagueness as she sings this beautiful almost folk tune. This is a transcription I've done for organ solo. So this is The Girl with the Flaxen Hair by Claude Debussy.
some beautiful sounds on this instrument and that really shows sort of the great warmth you can get in this wonderful, wonderful hall. Originally sort of about the same size as the original church if you ever see pictures of it. And the interesting thing about this organ case is if you look at the front of it, it looks like there's a bit missing at the top and that's because when it was installed in the original church there was a rose window which they didn't want to cover up. So they got the uh, organ builder Schultz to leave a little gap at the top of the pipework which still showed the rose window and that shape is still here today. Now, when Schultzer came over for the great exhibition at the invitation of Prince Albert, it's related to the next piece by Felix Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn used to visit England throughout the 1830s, 40s. He uh, gave organ recitals, piano recitals, and of course performed for Queen Victoria and Prince Albert privately. They were great at bringing great musicians to this country and uh, bringing, as I said, the music and the arts and the industry from the continent and from Germany. And uh, when Mendelssohn came over, people hadn't heard organ playing like this. He used to improvise, he would include chorales, it was very virtuosic and of course in those days a lot of English organs didn't even have full pedal boards and Mendelssohn would never say what he was going to play in concert because he didn't know the state of the English organ he was going to find. So he would have loved and have known an instrument with this sound and these resources. While he was over here, he was commissioned to write a set of pieces. Originally sort of studies for organ, voluntaries, which the English were absolutely fanatical about calling things a voluntary, a collection of pieces. Mendelssohn started writing this and decided he would call them organ sonatas. They're not sonatas in the normal sense of the word. They're sort of collections of pieces put together. And I'm going to play the third one in A major. Written in the 1840s uh, and published in England for the very first time, this piece is actually in two movements. It begins with a tune which he'd originally written for his sister's wedding processional, a big sort of A major march. It then sets up into a fugue in the minor key and includes a Lutheran chorale. Aus tiefen Oki schrei ich zu dir, which means from the depths I cry to thee. And you'll hear that in the pedal. keeps making an appearance, uh, builds up, builds up, and he asks the player to get faster and faster until he brings back the opening theme. And then there's a beautiful little slow andante movement to follow, very simple, and that closes the whole sonata. I think it's a brilliant piece of music, and it's perfectly written to show this. And apparently at the time, this was how Mendelssohn played. When he improvised and wrote, and the way this piece is written, this was the closest demonstration we have of what people would have heard when Mendelssohn performed in this country. So this is Mendelssohn's Organ Sonata, number three in A major.
some wonderful sounds and great to have those pieces to show how Mendelssohn would have used an instrument just like this back in the 1840s. Another piece now written in this country. In London in 1872, Gounod was living there and was writing a suite of pieces. He didn't complete the suite, but one piece has become very, very popular. A piano piece originally called Funeral March of a Marionette. It was later orchestrated and became famous as the theme tune for Alfred Hitchcock on television. Um, but it tells an odd tale. Guno sets his very macabre march, and there's a tale throughout it written in the score uh, that Guno provided. Some say there's a duel at the beginning, or the marionette falls from the shelf and there's a crash. The toy soldiers then all assemble and set off in a, a strange uh, funeral march with this marionette. And you hear them marching along with him. Uh, there's some loud moments, and then there's some uh, moments where, even though they're toy soldiers, they still stop to have a little break, a bit of fun, and some refreshments before setting off on their funeral march once again and disappearing in the distance. Um, if you go online, you can actually look for Tom's animation, which accompanies this, which he used many times in concerts. But today, I'm going to give you my organ solo arrangement of this. So, this is the funeral march of a marionette by Guno.
a great fun piece, and I'm sure you definitely know that tune. Um, we're going to go to the world of opera now, and Casta Diva from Norma by Bellini. Now, Bellini is probably best known as giving his name to a cocktail. However, his operas were all the rage in the 1830s, the early 19th century in Italy, and this one was written in 1831. Norma tells the tale of a, a druid high priestess. It's a tragedy, so things don't go well. However, at the very beginning, there's this beautiful, beautiful aria, probably the most famous thing in the entire opera, Casta Diva. Um, she's praying with the other druids to the moon for peace. Uh, and she sings Casta Diva, which means chaste goddess. And as she sings to the moon, you get this beautiful flowing line over this very simple accompaniment. It could have almost been just a, a normal piano solo. It's become an extremely famous uh, solo aria. But I thought it would work really well on the organ because we can show the beautiful flutes and solo lines of this organ um, and provide an operatic piece to show in this beautiful hall. So I hope you enjoy this. You'll know this beautiful, beautiful melody. This is Casta Diva from Norma by Bellini.
I hope you enjoyed hearing that on the organ and hearing some of the beautiful sounds this instrument creates. I've played here many times over the years in concerts and when you have concerts here it's, it's a wonderful experience because they have a great spread of tea and cake and people sit on tables in the hall and in fact the interesting thing about this school is there's not one organ, this one, there's another one in the chapel, another brilliant instrument which we'll be bringing you very soon so keep an eye out for that concert as well. And Paul Russell, who looks after this organ, the custos of the organ, does a great, great job. Um, as I say, it's an old instrument. It's in a constant state of being repaired, renewed, and brought back to life. Uh, but it's also an antique, as I say, and fourth organ builders came specially to tune today and look after it and get everything working. So thank you to all of them, and thank you to Ellesmere School and Ellesmere College for allowing us to come in today and film and record. As I said, Tom, my brother, is here filming and recording, so he's come along as well, and so it's wonderful that we can share this with you today. And to finish with, we're going to stay in the world of opera. Carmen by Bizet, probably the most famous opera in the world, I think. There's so many tunes in it. And as a result, Edwin Lemaire, the great British concert organist in the early part of the 20th century, wrote a concert fantasy, a Carmen fantasy, using just about as many tunes as he could in the space of one piece. Um, they're all stuck together, but Lemaire's idea was that he wanted to make the organ popular. He said he didn't understand why people would go to organ recitals sometimes because the programmes are so dry, dusty and dull. People wanted some music that they actually knew. And you can't beat pieces from Carmen. And it's pieces like this that he would attract audiences of up to 10,000 people. Now, Carmen... Initially, it was a bit of a flop when it was written by Bizet. 1875, it opened in Paris, and people didn't like the tale of it. Um, a wily, uh, manipulative gypsy girl called Carmen, who cons Don Jose and leaves him heartbroken and runs off with a toreador. Um, she's killed at the end on stage, and people didn't like the heroine being so awful, uh, and didn't like someone dying on stage right at the very end of an opera. Um, it didn't have the feel-good factor for them, and it was a bit too realistic. Um, However, it became very popular later on. It's now one of the most popular operas in the world. But on the 33rd day of the first performances, when it wasn't going very well, Bizet actually died. Um, it doesn't get much worse than that, really. It was also his wedding anniversary that day, and he was only 36 years old. And if he'd lived, who knows what he would have gone on to write. He could have written some great pieces. However, he's best remembered for... Carmen. So I hope you enjoy this. This is Le Maire's Concert Fantasia on themes from Bizet's Carmen.